after his wild comments about pronouns and, of course, attacking gamers, uh, Matt Hansen, who is part of Avowed, <laughs> the new the new RPG that's going to be a train wreck for Xbox, is getting torched by a whistleblower from his own company. This is pretty wild stuff, and it's good. Uh, I'm glad that people are getting called out uh, because the video game industry has had a big problem where people have had to sit down and shut up and take this kind of thing in the DEI culture for a long, long time. They call it a culture of toxic positivity at these video games companies where you're just not allowed to criticize anything. And uh, now that this is happening, it's showing that there's a tide that's turning within these companies, uh, that there's fights going on, struggles going on. It's not all one direction. It's only a good thing, which I'm very, very happy to report on this morning. So let's get into this news in just a moment. My name's John Delarose. Everybody smash that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate you guys being there. We're getting really close to 50,000 subscribers and uh, trying to make that push. Appreciate you for being here. This is my Fandom Pulse Substack, which I co-run with John Trent, who wrote this beautiful article. John Trent actually he came from Bounding Into Comics and That Park Place. He's the guy who like writes all of the articles that YouTubers read uh, all the time. You've seen his articles on Yellow Flash, on Asmongold, on Endymion, on... <laughs> it goes down the line. Uh, uh, Vera Dark, The Quartering. Uh, he is the hardest-hitting journalist in the entertainment sphere, and we're proud to have him with us. So... This is our Substack where we write the news. We're doing this full time, guys. So please support us. Grab a paid membership today. It's only five dollars, one Starbucks cup of coffee, and it allows us to be full time journalists so that we can actually uh, counter all the narratives that are going on with Kotaku, IGN, PC Gamer because it needs to be done. There's literally nobody else out there uh, other than uh, John Trent and myself in this space. So please uh, support us today. It's in the description below. Thank you so much for signing up and uh, making us a success so far. A former employee at Obsidian Entertainment, the developer behind the upcoming Avowed game, described the company's art director Matt Hansen as pure evil while also revealing the company has been captured by woke ideology. This is pretty big. We knew it's been captured by woke ideology. That's nothing new. But now that there's a whistleblower coming out, this is a big, big deal. Uh, Smash JT actually detailed a former employee at Obsidian reached out to him and shared a ton of information about the company's culture, as well as its art director, Matt Hansen, who's openly admitted to discriminated against white men. Smash JT's group doing great work as well. Uh, Smash JT uh, shared that his whistleblower detailed that Obsidian has devolved into a corporate-driven leftist echo chamber where the agenda and ideologies now far outweigh any kind of actual passion for game development. Yeah, you can see this in a lot of these AAA companies, and that's been a big, big thing. The diversity sneaks in, and then they invite their friends, and then they try to kick out all the white males who actually make the game great. And, uh, and you see what happens every single time. You look at all of these uh, video game design studios, and it's always these like weird women all the way through things, and uh, they destroy every video game once they, once they get into these companies. And uh, for some reason, people like Matt Hansen want this to happen. I don't know if it's like a self-flagellation sort of uh, ceremonial thing that they do, but it's very, very bizarre. Um, and so the former employee, we'll just call Doe for the anonymity purposes of the video, said Smash JT. Uh, describes the workplace as being completely overrun by external influences, misguided priorities, and a tax toxic atmosphere that ultimately drove him out. Speaking specifically to Hanson, the whistleblower shared, I know how spiteful of a person Matt unfortunately is, and I know how he and probably others will try to witch hunt me just to try to make my life hell because they aren't getting their way. Now, this is uh, typical gamma male behavior. If you guys have not followed the sociosexual hierarchy uh, stuff that's going on right now and actually uh, cultural uh, philosophy. Uh, Sigma Game is a substack that follow that covers that, and you can see this here. They, these guys set them up as as kings in their own little fiefdom. They think they're smarter than everybody else. They're not well liked uh, by almost everybody, um, and yet they have this like entitled attitude to where they have to lash out at anybody who even comes remotely critical of them. This is uh, just a typical like textbook case of this kind of thing, and we see it with Matt Hansen here. Later on in the video, Smash JT revealed that Obsidian's cultural shift began in 2018 when Microsoft purchased the company. Surprise, surprise, Bill Gates made it part of Xbox Studios. He revealed it began when Microsoft sent an all-staff email instituting the introduction of optimal but in reality mandatory pronouns in email signatures, meetings, and other various communications around the office. And while initially framed as optional, and this is what they do, every single time an SJW comes into an organization, they start this like diversity 
change and they go, hey, guys, you know, we should be more inclusive of females and minorities. It's going to be a totally optional thing. We're just going to have a nice lunch and learn and we're going to watch a PowerPoint presentation from this black consultant that's come in that we paid $10,000. But, you know, totally optional. And then pretty soon, like, you know, it's, it's optional. But if you're not there, like they notice you're not there. And then pretty soon it's mandatory. This is what they do every single time. It, it's like a, it is just what they do with companies. Uh, it's really, really sad. And a lot of these companies have fallen to this kind of thing. It became quickly clear that dissent was not welcome. However, an alleged misgendering incident occurred when Hansen sent a company-wide email declaring zero tolerance for intentional or malicious misgendering. The email's tone was described to me as passive-aggressive, yet fairly threatening. It was also warning to employees that they, if they didn't align with the policies, how they could be facing termination if they decided to go against this innocent thing called pronouns. That's right. Uh, this was the turning point at Obsidian where the company culture became increasingly unwelcome to anyone who didn't fit a specific mold. Smash JT shared with this whistleblower informed him, there were only a handful of straight white males. As they put it, I could count them all on one hand. The studio itself was extremely gay and LGBTQ friendly. The ideology began to morph and adhere to certain expected viewpoints. And if you do not ideologically align with these people, you are instantly outcast in creating a deeper echo chamber of like-minded thought. This is not just the case here, guys. I hear this in a lot of places, not just in video games, but even like regular workplaces these days. If you're in a major corporation, you just have to deal with this stuff and you just have to sit down and shut up. It's been a long, long time coming. But uh, I think the tide might be turning at this point. I think people have had enough of this. And uh, But you'll see the similar at Ubisoft, at BioWare. It's exactly the same sort of culture. And this is exactly why the games can't be produced and people aren't making good games anymore because they're all focused on this. They're not focused on what matters. Uh, as discussing how the company handled COVID, many of the employees led by Hansen refused to return to work, citing their lives could be at risk. The whistleblower believed that the intersection of extreme COVID caution and LGBTQ market Marxist alignments now had morphed into some sort of new age religion. He said Doe felt these people needed a real religion to embrace because without it, we're seeing exactly what happens. They become lost souls clinging to identity politics as their God. The whistleblower went on to share that many of his fellow employees aren't there anymore or create games for gamers, but instead push the agenda uh, from top to bottom uh, to further promote their ideologies. The corporate chokehold was stifling creativity and stripped games of values for players. Leaders like Matt Hansen continued to be empowered to go on unhinged rants on Blue Sky, re being extremely racist, attacking gamers, and being protected by the very echo chambers of positive feedback that have created over the years at companies like Obsidian. And this is what Hypnotic said about the situation. Matt Hansen, art director over at Obsidian Entertainment, has deleted his X account at it after getting crucified publicly by Elon Musk. I guess he's trying to avoid potential legal ramifications from this post regarding interesting hiring practices that are based solely on skin color. Maybe he will get his wish after all. And Hypnotic pointed out, here it is, reminder to black artists out there, this is the why this guy got attention to begin with, who are looking for portfolio reviews or job advice. My DMs are open. You will always have my priority. We get too many crusty white dudes in this field. Please let me help you replace me one day. I want to go back to living in the woods. Very bizarre stuff. But that's what these do. It is it is a weird uh, like sort of penance program for being white uh, that these people go on. It, it's, it's the craziest virtue signals I've ever seen. The whistleblower, of course, said he's extremely difficult to work with, that he has an unwillingness to accept constructive criticism and a consistent tendency to make assumptions about low-level employees' commitments. He then went on to relay, Matt Hansen is an evil person. He's a bad human being. He is someone that I would not want to be caught working with because I don't want an environment that involves someone that does the things that I've been told he did during the tenure while Doe was there. Absolutely crazy stuff like there. Now, I'm glad these whistleblowers are starting to come forward from these companies. We've talked with somebody from Ubisoft over here, and uh, it's been eye-opening just to see how bad things are. Uh, the more that comes out, the safer it is for the whistleblowers, guys. So I got to tell you, if you're one of these people in these companies, talk to me, talk to Indemi and talk to Smash JT. Let them know what's going on in these companies. Let them know because we will, of course, protect our sources every single time. And second, we will tell the truth about gaming and what's going on in these companies that is absolutely destroying the industry. We're not going to let it slide. And I think we are turning the tide, guys. I think it is actually working. I think we're winning uh, because we're gamers and we know how to do this kind of thing. And uh, this will change the culture. It's a it's a big uh, thing that this is coming out. And I'm glad it finally is uh, because this is kind of exactly what you'd expect uh, and you'd heard innuendo about this kind of thing before, but now we have 
hard hitting proof that this is real, that these environments are toxic at these woke video game companies, and uh, they're going to get what's due by, by people not buying their games. I will continue along reporting about this. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And make sure to check out Fandom Pulse, our sub stack, where we write these articles, my friends. Grab this right. Uh, grab a paid subscription for only $5 a month. It's one cup of coffee to support our journalism. Uh, that's what we need right now, and we appreciate you for being there.